Welcome to MAKE, Hands-On Intro to Engineering Design, a course taught at the University of South Florida. In this video, we're going to discuss how to create animations and render images and videos in Autodesk Inventor. Hello, today we are going to be discussing how to render high-quality images and videos from assemblies and parts in Autodesk Inventor. Uh, essentially, with parts and assemblies, you use the same process, although you can ass uh, animate assemblies uh, to give um, some motion and uh, demonstrate the constraints that you have applied um, for later viewing for presentations or whatnot. Um, so let's get started here. If you can see, I've opened up the assemblies example that we've used in some of the previous vi videos. Um, you can see uh, all the constraints have been applied so the motion uh, is properly defined. And what we're going to do is first show you how to create a nice rendered image of this part. So what we're going to do is put it into a nice position and view that we like. Um, I think this looks fine. And we're going to go and take some nice rendered images. To do this, we're going to use the uh, Inventor Studio environment. And we get there by clicking the Environments tab in the ribbon and then selecting Inventor Studio. Uh, we've worked with a couple other environments, including the, the 3D model and assemble environments. And now we're going to try out uh, the uh, uh, Inventor Studio environment. This allows you to render the images. To create a rendered image, it's actually fairly simple. You go up here to the upper left hand corner and click render image. This will create an image from the view that you have on the screen. Um, you can have some general settings here including the size of the rendered output, uh, where the output will be saved. If you don't put any information here, it will prompt you after the uh, image has been re rendered. So what we're going to do is you're just going to click the render image and it's going to render the part for us. Uh, if we like it, we could s save it in this way. Uh, if we don't, we can, say, zoom in a little and click Render again. It renders it a little larger, a little more what we would like. We can then just click Save, and it will save it as whatever file type we want, along with whatever options. If you need some sort of compression and whatnot, you can get that here by clicking Options. Um, I'm fine with the bitmap and I'm just going to hit save and it will save that rendered image. If you notice there are shadows and reflections that can be applied. Uh, but this is a much higher quality output than just selecting uh, from the file menu and selecting export. Uh, this way you can create some nice uh, presentation worthy images uh, to distribute or display. So now what we're going to discuss is how to animate uh, your assemblies in Autodesk Inventor and then render those animations into videos. Um, the first step in rendering an animation is deciding what you're going to animate. Um, generally the procedure for this is to create a constraint that you can then uh, change the values from programmatically using Inventor Studio. And I'm just going to show you an example so that it becomes clear what we're doing. So right now we're still in, in uh, Inventor Studio. We're going to click Finish Inventor Studio and this is going to bring us back into the assemble environment. Now if you notice, uh, we can easily move the uh, crankshaft around and this is what we're going to want to an animate. So first we have to define a constraint that will allow us to rotate this part. So the way we go about doing this is to click constrain and we're going to select this flat edge uh, face on the side of the crankshaft and this flat edge on the side of the housing and we're going to select an angle constraint with a directed angle solution. And what this will allow us to do is to set the angle so you can see it's set to zero degrees. It really doesn't matter what you set it to at this point. We're going to click OK and now you can see that we actually can't move that part because it's fully constrained. So now what we can do is go back into environments and select Inventor Studio. And now if we open up this part in the model tree, you can see the angle. We can actually right click on the angle and select animate constraints. So we'll then bring up uh, a little dialog saying that we have to activate the animation uh, commands. We'll click OK. And this will bring up the animation timeline and the animate constraints dialog. And what this allows us to do is select a start and end value for the constraint as well as some information on the start time, duration, and end time and whether or not we want to have a velocity profile. We're going to leave the acceleration the same and we're just going to select uh, the start to be zero uh, degrees and the end we're going to have that be 1080 
Uh, so that is three full rotations of the part, and we want this to be a 11 second long uh, duration. So we're going to click OK. Now we can go on the timeline and do some scrubbing here. We can go all the way back to the start and then click play. Now you can see the animation starting up because it uses that acceleration profile. It accelerates to the maximum speed, then starts to slow down towards the end and finally completes the rotation. So we can hit stop. We could uh, just render this image, um, I'm sorry, this video by clicking the record animation. Um, and that will allow us to record render the animation from the view that's on the screen. However, if we want to do some more advanced uh, video uh, manipulation, we could add um, cameras to the animation. So what we're going to do is find a nice view that we like. We're going to go over here to cameras. We're going to right click on cameras and say create camera from view. And we're going to click on that. And if you'll notice, it creates this block. If we rotate around, shows that it's a camera and this is the direction and the target. So now that we have our camera, we can bring up the animation timeline and we can actually animate this camera. So if we select right click and select animate camera, this brings up the animate camera dialog. It's similar to the animate constraint dialog <clears throat> and this allows us to create a turnable camera. This is the most common action that I use with the camera and we select Y origin. If you get another view, you can see the direction that this thing will be rotating. We're going to say that this is a five second long animation and we want it to go plus minus plus one revolution. We leave everything else the same and we set the animation time that we want. Click OK. What we can do now is in the animation timeline we can go to the view select camera one it will put us in the camera one view and when we push play we can now see the animation of our camera so for completeness we'll add one last camera we're gonna just go in and zoom on the body we'll center this about we're gonna create a second camera from the view um, create camera from view. Now we have our second camera and we can finally uh, render our final video. The way we're going to do this is by clicking video producer. This allows us to use the animation as well as uh, different camera views to produce a single uh, video file output. So we can click producer. Again gives us a little dialog indicating that we haven't used the production uh, commands yet. We'll just click OK and this will bring up the production timeline. It looks very similar to the animation timeline except the only options we have are the cameras. So what we can do is place our two different views that we have in here. Um, so these are the views that are coming from camera 1 and camera 2. We can go in and select how long these will be active. So the camera we're going to say it's a 5 second duration and this one as well a 5 second duration. And then what we can do is add a transition in between the two, a fade transition. So we'll add that there. We'll double click and say that this is a one second duration. So we have our video laid out with the different camera views and transitions. And we can just click record animation now. And this will give us a slight preview of what the uh, output of the animation is going to be. You may have to play around with your cameras to ensure that your part is fully contained, but for the demonstration purposes, this, this will be appropriate. <clears throat> Make sure that in your output you select the total length of the video. So we're going to say 11 seconds. We can select our frame rate. We'll leave it at 15 for now. Again, if you don't select anything for the file output, a dialog will pop up. So. I'm happy with all these values and we're just going to click render brings open the file dialog whichever fi uh, uh, codex you have available on your computer it will allow you to create those types of files um, I prefer to use the AVI as the WMV files uh, are pretty poor quality when they uh, are outputted so we're gonna select AVI video file we'll leave it as video and click save a third dialog is going to pop up and give us some information about compression and I'm just going to leave it full frames uncompressed for now. Click OK and the rendering begins.
All right, now that Autodesk Inventor has finished, finished rendering the output, we can take a look at the output file. We'll go here and just open the file. Here, I'll stop it. You can see the fully rendered image, I mean video. And there you go. In this way, you can create some really nice high quality images and videos for presentation uh, using Autodesk Inventor. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching.